What's going on guys, today we're going to be talking about the harmless ransom note algorithm. So the problem goes as follows. Given, an, given a ransom note string and, it, and another string containing words from all the magazines, write a function that will return true if the ransom note can be constructed from the magazine. Otherwise, it will return false. Each letter in the magazine string can only be used once in your ransom note. So the example they gave they give is, this is a secret note for, your, for you from a secret admirer. Now, the magazine string, I'm not going to read it, but what I could tell is this is going to be false because the magazine string only has one secret and the note string you're trying to create has two secrets. So this is going to be false. If we change the uh, note string to be, this is a note for you from a secret admirer, then that would be true because we only have one string, I mean one secret word and one secret word in the magazine as well. I mean, this is just a simple overview, I mean a uh, example. Um, I am going to put the uh, problem down in the bottom left hand corner so that way you can see what's going on. And this, I'm gonna tell you right now, this. I did not script uh, any of this. The reason why is because I wanted to, I, I do I do remember these problems and I do remember solving them because they're pretty easy problems. And I wanted to go through that experience with you guys again, trying to solve it once more. Now, <clears throat> this one plays around. I do remember that this one does play around a lot with data structures. The reason why is because you got two strings, right? A magazine and a note string and you need to parse out those strings right also you do need to search you need to keep track of how many words there are of secret or how many words of the how many words are to be counted right you need to keep track of that as well and you're gonna also you're gonna obviously loop through the arrays um so this does play around with data structures because you're storing data so I'm trying to figure out, so let, 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 let's get to coding and then we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out from there. So we're going to have a function and mine's going to be called ransom note. And this ransom note is going to take in two parameters, uh, which is the note string, which is the one we want to create and magazine string, which is the one we the, the magazine string obviously <laughs> and we do need to parse these out so it's one complete string we need to parse it out to get those words so i'm just using an array for that because we do need to parse it out now if you do need to ask them are the words parsed i'm pretty sure they're not but are the words if the words were parsed already then this will be so much simpler and you don't need to do that but let's do an array or uh var note array is going to equal note string dot split and I'm splitting by space I'm gonna do the same thing for magazine magazine array is going to equal magazine string oops not array string dot split and I'm going to be okay now <clears throat> now that we have those split now we have an array of each word we still need to keep track of the words how many words of secret or the there are and I'm, I'm only going to be doing that for magazine because we're trying to compare the note string to the magazine if there's enough words in the magazine string to complete the note so I only need to keep track of how many words there are in the magazine array so I need to do a for loop and create another there, there's a, there's different ways you could do this right you could but I'm gonna create a hash table if you don't know what a hash table is is basically a uh, key value pair where for this instance there's two secrets right so the key would be secret and the value for that key is going to be two since there's two secrets secret words in the magazine array 
And the reason I want to do a hash table because uh, search time and insertion time, complexity time in a way, is constant. Uh, since you're just assigning variables, that's all you're doing. Um, actually, let me pull up a, uh, let me try to find a cheat sheet. I'll be back. So that way I'll explain it a little bit better. Let me see. So I did find one, guys. Here's a, um, a cheat sheet. Um, it's called bigocheatsheet.com. It's pretty good. So an array. We're not, we're not looking in an array right now. Uh, you might be, okay, I'm gonna explain it since you're probably gonna have questions either way, I'm not too sure. But an array, the insertion is O of N, but since over here we're doing an array, since we do need to parse it, that's why we're using an array. If we did not need to parse it, we would be using a stack for that because the insertion for the stack is O of one, which is constant, but searching through a stack is pretty crappy. Matter of fact, if it was already parsed, then we, we would be using a hash table throughout all of this I mean the hash table is pretty safe and solid all right but it's not parsed that's why we're using the array first of all now remember when I said that we need to get the um, how many words there are the count of words like two secrets two three these one in that kind of stuff the reason why I want to use a hash table is because we are going to be inserting the key value pair and we're going to be searching through this hash table which is constant still now most of these are oven and you know, most of them are ORN and O log of N. But binary search tree, I mean, that's overkill for this kind of stuff. So that's why I'm just doing hash table because it's pretty solid and that kind of kind of thing. And the worst time, what it means about worst complexity time is the amount of data that you have. Obviously, this data is not going to be that big, so it's still going to be in the average time complexity size. So we're going to be doing that right now. We're going to be using a hash table. Just... This is a pretty cool, I'll have this link down in the description if you want to look at it. Look at it. This is actually a pretty big deal if for interviews because they're going to ask you for time complexity. What's the time complexity of the algorithm you just wrote? And if they ask you, is there a better way to do this or is there a faster, that, that mostly, it's likely that your code is pretty slow and they want you to get the O of N, which is, which is the, which is great, which is pretty good um complexity time but just keep in mind that if they ask you hey is there a better way to do this or something like that that's probably because your code is too slow so let's use a hash table and i'm gonna just do an object for that so i'm gonna create a a variable called magazine because we're gonna be obj <clears throat> and it's gonna be an empty object since we're gonna just be uh keeping track of the words inside the magazine array all right, um, and then I'm gonna have another variable just called, is it possible? Possible. And I'm gonna set this equal to true for right now. True. Okay, okay, now we could actually start coding. So like I said, we do need to loop, or loop through the magazine array to keep track of the words, right? So magazine array dot for each. You can loop it however you want. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna get a word out. There's, we're gonna get a word, and for every word, we're gonna check if the magazine object has it. If it has it, we're gonna increment it by one. If it doesn't have it, we're gonna assign it a zero and then increment it. Right? Yeah, that makes sense. So, if there is no magazine word inside the magazine object, supposed to be object sorry about that guys it is object obj if there is no word inside the magazine object then we're going to make it we're gonna make it be zero the word whatever the word is we're gonna assign that a value of zero and then we're gonna increment it so I'm gonna just copy this Plus, and be done. So we're actually done with this. <laughs> it was actually pretty simple to keep track. Um, so right now I'm just checking if there's no, if there's no, if there is no word inside this object, then we're gonna assign that word with a value of zero, and then we're gonna automatically increment it, right? 
Uh, I did this because, well, we need to check if there's a word. If there's no word, we do need to assign it a zero. And if there is a word, we just want it to increment it. We'll, it'll, it'll just skip the step and increment it by one. So that, that is it for this one. Now that we have that, we do need to check the note array. Now, now it's time to actually check if we could actually construct the note, the note string with the magazine string. So we're going to for loop or loop through the uh, note array, checking it with the magazine object to see if there's enough words to actually create the note array, if that makes sense. So note array dot for each. We're gonna create, a, there's gonna be a word coming out of it. Let me put my semicolon down here. All right. So the first thing we need to do is check if there's actually a word. So if there is a word, magazine, magazine object word, if there's a word, good. We're gonna go in this else. If there's no word, I'm gonna just do the if else right now. If there's not a word, there's no word that exists. Uh, we're going to just set possible to equal to false because that because that word does not exist so we cannot construct the note array now, now that's the base case now inside this magazine right here so if there's a word in there we do need to decrement that word right so for example the string the the string there's two secrets right in the magazine if we use one of them, we need to decrement inside the object, the hash table. We need to decrement that value by one. So that way we could say that we've used one of those secret words. Okay. So that's what we're going to do right now. So if there is a word, magazine, object, the word, we're going to decrement it by one. And let me see what else. Oh, oh, yes, yes. So we did assign a zero. I, I'm looking at the zero right here. If, if it is, if the word, so let's say we're trying to use two secrets in our note array, right? We have two secrets in our note array, but there's only one secret in the magazine object. So if we try to do that, you'll, you'll figure it out. Watch. If, oops, if magazine object is not object word if the word is less than zero that means that we don't have no more words of secret or the we don't have that no more words that will complete the sentence right so we're gonna have to set possible equal to false false Control save and I think uh, these brackets let me get this right Control save. Okay. Now I think that's it. And then down here, we're going to just return. We're going to return possible. It was possible or not. So let me, let me, let me. Now remember the problem where we have two strings. We do need to parse it. And we're just grabbing the words because we need to keep track of how many words there are. And we just created a if it's true or not. Okay, we're, we're looping through this so that way we can get the count of the words. And then we create another loop so that way we could check if the notarate does contain. I mean, if the magazine object has all of the words necessary to create the note string. Right inside this, we're, we're checking if there's a if there's actually a word. If there's not, we're going to already we're automatically going to set possible to false. If there is, then we're just going to do magazine object decrement that word by one. And if it's zero, less than zero, then um, we're going to set that possible to false because there's no more of there's no more words of that word of the secret or whatever. There's no more words to be added. Yeah, this this should be this should be great. This should be good. So now we're going to do. Um, var answer is going to equal to ransom and I'm going to be setting in or putting in these two 
uh, strings that they provided this one and this one copy paste all right so this secret okay there's two secrets here and there's two secrets here so this would actually give me true I'm gonna log out answer control save now let's try it node harmless Ooh, and I get an error Okay, I did figure it out. I spelled for each wrong and I had two parentheses. I had it like this, which is wrong. I only have the one. All right, now we actually try it out. We get true. Great, because we do have, well, we do have it. But if I take away one secret from this uh, message, this should return false. Yes, it does. And we've just created it. Awesome. That's the answer. All right. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I mean, <laughs> we're done. Uh, but honestly, guys, you do need to learn time complexity. And I will leave this, where is it at? This cheat sheet down below in the uh, description. So that way you can look at this. This is very important because they want you to know, especially if you're applying to big companies like Google, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, all those kind of places. They, they're they going to test you on this. Trust me, I've done it. Uh, and yeah they're gonna test you on these kind of things the time complexity and the data structure so you need to learn your data structures and your time complexity data structures i'm pretty sure you already know about those kind of things you just don't know about the time complexity of those um but yeah guys that's that's it for this video we've done a ransom note and thank you so much for watching the video thank you so much again for actually taking time out of your day to watch the video and I hope you've learned something for this. And don't worry, we, I think we have like 11 more to go. Uh, please like the video if you liked it. Dislike it if you disliked it. And leave a comment down below why you disliked it. I really want to know. I want to create better content for you guys. And if you haven't, please subscribe. Uh, please consider subscribing at least. And thanks for watching, guys. And I will see you in the next video.